Hello, I'm Sarah Trevelyan, owner and founder of Sarah Loves to Sew and the Beginner Sewing Boxes. Welcome, we are going to show you, or I'm going to show you today, how to make this reversible sun hat. So this is the wide brim version. If you want to make a smaller bucket hat, you just shorten the brim. Okay, so this will be made to measure. So what you will need to make this video is a tape measure. Um, if I can just find mine. So you will need a tape measure and you will need a calculator. So that is what you're going to need to make this wide brimmed hat and you will be able to wear it either way and also in quite windy conditions because I found out that because we've made it exactly to fit your head it will stay on even if it's windy so get your packs and let's make this so the first thing you're going to need to do is measure your head or the head of whoever you're making the hat for so with your measuring tape just put it around the area you want the hat to sit on okay and take that measurement so in inches mine's just over 21 so I'm just going to it's more like 22 so what you want to do is do it in inches and write down yours so mine's 22 and then what you need to do is divide your measurement by 6.284 divide it by 6.284 so for me when I do that go and choose my calculator mine's coming up at 3.5 so that's 3.5 inches now you're going to need your paper with your pattern paper take a corner that's at least half uh, sorry double your head measurement so mine was 3.5 so i've cut a corner that's at least seven inches square from the pattern piece now what you're going to do then just fold it in half and half again and then you're going to mark out your measurement or the 3.5 in my case but whatever your head circumference worked out to be when you divided it by that magic number so what you do is just mark 3.5 um sorry mark your measurement all the way round from the middle little corner there and just do a few dots showing that 3.5 or whatever the measurement is in your case all the way round and what this will give us is the top circle of the hat so once you've done your dots just draw them all together and then you're going to cut out that shape and that should give you your circle. So, where are my paper scissors? Do not use your lovely fabric scissors to cut this, even though it is dressmaking paper. It's still paper. So, just cut around that arch until you have your circle. And this is the top. So, just write on it top. And you're going to cut one in blue fabric, one in white, and one in the interfacing. And that's what we'll be doing with all three pieces. So you'll have your top, 
your band and your brim all cut one in blue one in white one in interfacing so it will be cutting two in the fabric and one out of the interfacing so to make the second pattern piece this is going to be this strip that goes around the middle of the hat what you want to do is take your measurement so mine was 22 and this time we're going to divide it by two and that's going to give you in inches how long you need this strip to be and then we're also going to take four and a half inches to make it down to there so that will be how wide you want your hat to be if you think you want a, a hat to sit up, sit up a little bit more you can obviously extend that to five inches um, but I'm I'm sticking with four and a half and that's what this hat is um, it's totally personal preference if you want to go a little bit bigger but four and a half is that one and then the next thing you do then is you draw a rectangle so it's 11 for me by 4.5 that way now take your tape measure and this time I want you to do mark on there one and a half inches down from the bottom line and one and a half inches down from the top line and then if you've got a French curve this makes it very easy you just curve from top corner here down to where you've marked it so mine's meeting about here so that's good you can do that just make sure it's the same on the bottom curve like that and then you want to join up those lines and you can see you've got this curved piece now and the next thing to do is just to measure half an inch from the line here Oops. and then just draw a line there so you can see it's got a little curve at the bottom okay now you want to cut that out and what you'll be doing is using this pattern piece you'll actually be cutting on the fold of the fabric so let me just explain that you've got the fold of the fabric here for instance you'll fold the fabric and then you will place your cut out pattern piece on that fold so what you'll be doing when you cut it out you'll then have double the length of what's on the pattern piece so for now just cut out this one now if you don't have a French curve um, I've included in the pack a sheet of paper with the same angle of curve on it so if you cut that out and use that as a guide then you'll get the same same curve now the French curve it's, it's a very useful tool if you do want to do more dressmaking um, so yes yeah, so that's number two and this will be, you'll be cutting out two in the fabric. So that's one in the blue, one in the white, and then you'll cut one in the interfacing, which is the fusible interfacing that comes in the pack as well. So that's your second pattern piece done. Now the third one is the brim. So move on to that next 
fold it in half and then in half again and then where you've got the centre point just put down your first pattern piece in the corner so keep your hat folded up so this one so fold it up into its bit and then just put it down and draw around it and then you want to measure half an inch for seam allowance all the way around that first line so this will be where we will be sewing the two fabrics together for the brim so just marking out a seam allowance and then that will be just a rough mark seam allowance there and then for the brim itself if you measure it four inches out that will be the length of the brim and mark four inches all the way around in the same way so you get a nice curve actually this is the first line so four inches nice big wide brim if you want to do a bucket hat then obviously you reduce this four inch marking to a smaller hat so if you want to do a two inch hat that will give you your bucket hat instead of the big sort of wide brim one so we're just marking four inch out and then you need seam allowance as well on the end of that so then it's half an inch all the way around as well and this is how we pattern draft a made to measure hat so it's just simply three pattern pieces but the key is it's around measurements of your head so it will fit nicely so half 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 and then once you've done that cut out the pattern leaving enough fabric for the seams so keep all four pieces together while you're cutting and just cut where you've marked roughly at the brim. That's one. And cut out the inside. And there we have it. And fold your brim, and you have the circle in the middle, and you will have the brim on the outside. So we will be cutting the same as the others. So it's cutting two out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Um, the two fabric, obviously one in each, one out of the white, one out of the blue, and one out of the interfacing the brim. So once you've got these pattern pieces you can then make as many hats for that head as you like. So we've got all our pattern pieces together. Next thing to do is to cut those fabrics out of these. Oh, that wasn't the piece, that's the piece. Yeah, make sure you don't get mixed up with the circle you've cut out of the brim and your piece that you've already drawn on. So those are the three pieces so go and go ahead now and cut all of these so you want one blue out of every one and one white and one interface once you've cut out all the pieces from both fabrics 
and the interfacing, the next thing that you want to do is start ironing the interfacing onto the fabric. So pick whichever fabric you want as the outside. Obviously it will be a reversible hat, but for now I'm going to pick the blue and white. So just turn one of the pieces down with the right side down and iron. So on this interfacing, you'll feel the bumpy side is the side with the glue. So place that face down on the fabric, on the wrong side of the fabric. And I've just put mine on this old piece of fabric. So if there's any bit overlapping, if it's just cut out quite rawly, it won't stick to my lovely wool mat. And then just press it down without steam and do this with all three pieces of interfacing on the same type of fabric. So the same with the brim. So just feel the bumpy side. And put the bumpy side down. And do this with all three of the pieces of interfacing. Now construct these three pieces into the hat. First thing you want to do is cut your notches. So fold your circles in half and in half again. And this will just give you the guide points where you'll be lining up your notches. So just cut a little corner. We're using a half inch seam allowance on these. Um, and then when you open it up, you'll see you've got notches in all four points. And then do the same with your the sort of column of the hat. So if you fold that in half, and then just notch the top and bottom and then you can see when you open it up where you'll have those. Now what we're going to do first of all is to sew our one piece together so it forms a circle. So you're just going to sew a straight line down from the top to the bottom and you can see it's slightly angled so it is um, shorter at the top than at the bottom slightly so just take this bit and sew a straight line down and don't forget to do your notches on all the pieces so fold this into half and into half again into quarters and likewise you just want to cut a notch in those corners on the inside and also on the outside because you will be lining up this hat with the lining or the other side of the hat. So it just gives you really good um, points to line up with. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we'll go and sew this line down there. So once you've sewn that seam, just press open the seam and then you're just going to mark some more notches. So if you line up those two notches there and fold so you're just ma matching that with the notches and folding in half again and then you can just cut those corners so we've got one there and one there, and there, and there. And open.
open it out and when it stands up you should be able to see a slight um, narrowing at the top it might not be could be sort of completely cylindrical or you can see it tends to get a little bit narrower at the top and then all you need to do is get this piece right sides together start pinning the notches together so you work your way around like this And then you mark those notches. Oops, keep going off camera. So if you pin where the notches are first, and then you can go back and do slight little gathers um, on the other ones. So it would look like a nice sort of casual fabric ha hat. So we just pinned all four notches together and then you go back and add more pins for this. So this is the tricky bit of sewing a curved seam. So if you've got that much fabric to play with, the outside is going to be a little bit bigger than the inside. You just have to manipulate the fabric and don't forget you'll be sewing half an inch in so you can disguise if there's some gathers like that you can just start to put little gathers in so when the hat's completed i'll show you on this one that i made earlier you can see these little gathers, but they'll be quite evenly spaced out because you've marked the four notches, so it will just be the gathers in between. And it's just to take up any surplus fabric. So we can, and you know, it's a nice casual summer hat. So those gathers, are absolutely fine to have. And then once it's pinned all the way around, I think there's another one there, you um, take it to the sewing machine and sew that top bit on in place. So again, nice little gather there, spreading them out so that it's not all bunched up together. The same area and the last little quarter of gathers here so it kind of makes sense if you keep pinning halfway and do one gather one side and one on the other so there's another little gather there Okay, and now you take that to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch all the way around. Just make sure you don't sew any of this in. So really flatten it down and you're feeling and feeding all the way around when you're sewing. Okay, so you're constantly feeling the underneath and keeping what you don't want in out of the way of the fabric. Oh look, the interfacing has come away. Just pin that through both layers. Okay, so I'll take that to the machine. Just taking this to the machine and I'm pulling out one of the pins so I can get it under the foot and I'm lining it up with the half inch mark, which is the four eighths there. And I will just get my pin cushion closer. And then you work your way around. And there is quite a knack to getting just the pieces that you want in. So you don't want to sew any of the 
this underneath in unnecessarily. So off we go. And you're sewing on a sewing on a curve. So this is good practice for when you come to making dresses or anything. You have to sew a sleeve in, for instance, in an armhole. Um, so just keep double checking that the fabric underneath is lying flat with each different centimetre of movement that you're sewing. So basically as you're going along, every little bit you sew, just keep checking the underneath is lying flat. And so mine's getting a little bit caught there, so just keep, keep lying it flat. So you don't start sewing anymore. So it's because we're sewing on this corner. It's a continual curve. So every time I take a pin out, I'm also flattening the fabric underneath. So I can't stress enough how important that is, otherwise you will start to have to do some unpicking, which is always a pain, and it just slows your process down and takes away some of the joy. So just keep, every time you take a pin out, just hold the fabric underneath and make sure it's lying away from the stitch and we're almost back to the start it's going a little bit out of sync there just position again my notches are slipping so I've got to pull the top layer back a bit there, again holding that fabric underneath so you don't catch any of the upright of the hat and then just to secure just do some reverse stitches again. Okay, let's have a look at that then. So now you've started to make your little sort of cup shape with the little gathers all the way around. Okay, so just snip. I'm going to snip my threads off and then we're going to attach the brim to the bottom of the hat. So you can have a look at what it's looking like. Make sure you've caught all the edges in. And there's no holes all the way around, like so. Yeah, it's all done. So before you put the brim on, if you like, you can do this at this stage now. I'm just going to go and trim, not trim, I'm just going to, sorry, cut little bits with my fabric scissor. Scissors all the way around like that, just up to the sewing, up to the stitches, and that will just help the fabric lie flat when we turn it round. Um, so, for those of you that have done previous boxes with me, we did do this. I think it's when we were sewing Bertie the bunny, we had to sew some curves with him and let them lie flat as well so we trimmed it around his armpits didn't we and the crease between his leg and his tummy as well so we just keep snipping that be very careful you don't cut through your stitching um, and it will just allow that fabric to lie flatter when you've turned your hat the right way round Okay, now 
with right sides to right sides again we're going to pin the big brim on so let me just go and get the brim so we've already cut all four notches on the outer edge and the inner edge of the brim and now you want to get the top part of the hat you see it's taking shape you want to get the top part of the hat um, attached to the brim so to do this you want to find your notches on the top and with right sides together the notch on the brim and like we did with the top bit we're going to pin all four notches together first and that will allow us then to get it all done symmetrically. So we'll pin that notch. Again, it's a big seam allowance, an inch and a half, uh, sorry, half an inch. So I'm going to line up these two notches first. And the interfacing, we use the interfacing just to give the fabric some stiffness so that the brim will stay in place and the hat will hold its shape. Um, there we go. And at the end, I'll show you as well, if you want your hat to have even more sort of stiffness, you can add rows of stitching. You've seen them on sort of these bucket style hats where you can do like a quilting sort of technique where you do stitch round and round in a big, lots of big circles. Um, so if you wanted to, when you finished your hat, you could then do lots of top stitching all the way around and keep going and keep going until you get lines along the hat and that can just give it a bit of extra stiffness if you wanted to. I think what I'm going to do is actually design a smaller brimmed hat, a bucket hat for the males in my family and do that stitching on their hats. Um, okay, so we're pinning in the brim again. So you've matched up your four notches and you can see there's going to be surplus. So we're just going to do the same as we did with the top where we're going to have to do a few little gathers. So because I'm going to be sewing it that way I'm actually going to turn my pins around in a second. I'm just going to position the pin in each of the gaps again and just work my way around closing up the gaps as I go. So that pin's on the wrong side. I'm just going to bring it this way. Then I can just keep sewing. And might need to just get the fabric a bit flatter to get the pin in. That's quite normal. And then, yep, yeah, round we go. So what you'll have once you've sewn this one is one hat, the top of the hat, which will be this bit. And then you have the underneath of the hat, which in this hat is the same fabric, but we'll be doing it with a white, with a navy vintage hearts to match our reversible bags from last month. So it will all look very chic when we've got our sun hat and our little carry bag with us if we get the chance to go and spend some time on the beach somewhere nice and warm okay so once we've sewn it all pinned it all the way around we can take it back to the sewing machine just brought it to the sewing machine and before I start I'm just checking if I need any more pins anywhere because it really does help I think the more 
pins you have got in when you're sewing circles like this um, the easier it gets because you're going to be you're going to have to keep making sure that you don't sew the underneath again you've got to have that as flat as you can so you're going to have to stop anyway to take the pins out and it's quite a good sort of reminder to do that to check so it's another half seam seam allowance and take out the first pin okay let's go so a few reverse stitches to secure to secure it to start and just keep making sure you're not sewing the underneath so you have to just keep moving it along as you're sewing Just keep on doing that all the way around until you've finished the whole of the brim. So I've just finished sewing the brim all the way around and then you want to take your scissors and trim up to the stitching once more all the way around. You can see I've just skipped a bit there so the brim might be a little bit longer on that side but as you see once you've sewn the other hat the same as this you can then decide how wide you want your brim if you want it a bit shorter you can just trim it so yeah cut all the way around so that this will fold down easier and push it through and there as you can see you have a hat with a brim but we've got the interfacing so we will now do exactly the same with the other three pieces um, this time they won't have the interfacing on and then once you've got the same shape we'll then sew the two hats together so take the white fabric with the navy vintage hearts and this time we are going to do our notches on this fabric so fold the centerpiece in half and cut those and then obviously we're going to be sewing a line down there but it will be with right sides together so right sides together again and we will make sure they line up properly so we can sew that on the machine on that side with the little circle the top piece oops keep moving the off camera so just thumb press Fold it into four and then we can make our little notches again. Trim there, trim there, open it out and you have your four notches. And then you do the same with this. And we will cut the notches out on all four sides again, there and there. So I've sewn down the side there, so those together. So now we just open it out and press the seams open, like so. And then we start 
turn it around the right way and have a look at which end looks to be the top which looks to be the bottom so you can see when it curves the top is the top of the curve so it's very slightly like a rainbow and you want the top section although there's not very much in it at all okay so now you take the circular bit and your band and of course this is going to be a lot floppier than it was for um, the one with the interfacing on so let's now match the notches like so so just pin the four notches where's my pins pin the four notches to start with and then you can pin the sections in between oh i didn't i keep forgetting this once you've sewn this seam you then need to fold fold it in half again and then you get your other notches so then you can just cut those okay now it's that way round match your notches up together And do this all the way around like we did the navy fabric the little white flowers and then just work your way around the circle and you know you've got the fabrics right sides together making sure the band doesn't get twisted round so four notches first and then you can do the bits in between. No, so do these bits in between now. Like so. And then take that to the sewing machine and sew it on. So I've sewn down the side there, so those together. So now we just open it out and press the seams open like so and then we start turn it around the right way and have a look at which end looks to be the top which looks to be the bottom so you can see when it curves top is the top of the curve so it's very slightly like a rainbow and you want the top section although there's not very much in it at all okay so now you take the circular bit and your band and of course this is going to be a lot floppier than it was for um, 
the one with the interfacing on. So let's now match the notches like so. So just pin the four notches. Where's my pins? Pin the four notches to start with. And then you can pin the sections in between. Oh, I didn't, I keep forgetting this. Once you've sewn this seam, you then need to fold, fold it in half again. And then you get your other notches. So then you can just cut those. Okay. Now, is that way round? Match your notches up together. And do this all the way round like we did the navy fabric, the little white flowers. And then just work your way around the circle. And you know you've got the fabrics right sides together, making sure the band doesn't get twisted round. So four notches first, and then you can do the bits in between. Now, so do these bits in between now. Like so. And then take that to the sewing machine and sew it on. So I've just done with this fabric what I did with the other um, and I've sewn the top to the centerpiece and I've snipped the curves all the way so it'll lie flat and then I sewed the brim onto the main piece. So you have now you should have one slightly stiffer hat and the other one a bit floppier. So what you want to do now is sew these together. So with right sides together we want to um, sew these together. So turn the hat, the stiff one, inside out and then Put in the other hat so the right sides are together and basically fit it inside as best you can. And this is where you line up your notches again. So this will help if you line them up as you put them in and just pin, pin the notches one more time so there's another notch so once you've pinned the notches go round and pin the whole of the outer edge and then what we're going to do is just sew the two hats together but we are going to leave a gap big enough to get your hand through so we can pull the hat the right way round. So you're going to leave a gap probably about that big so you can just so that you can get your hand in and pull the hat the right, right way round. So pin all the way around the edges and sew and secure your stitches either side of the gap, the turning gap. So I've just sewn that all the way around. 
and then leaving an opening so we can turn it around but first once you've cut all your little stray ends off I am going to do the snip all the way around so um, it's at this stage if you feel that you've made the brim um, a little bit too wide for you this is when you can start to actually you can sew another line on the inside of it and trim it back if you want a shorter brim but I'm going for the wide brim because it's so nice hopefully one day I'll be able to go back and read a book maybe in the sun and keep the hat on so it can actually keep my head in the shade with a nice wide brim I'm not going to snip in between the stitches where I've left the gap because we're going to need to fold those under and it's tricky to fold them once they've been oh I thought I'd cut through the stitching then um, once it's actually been snipped so just yeah go around snip all these and this will just let it will just mean that this edge here when you turn it round and do the top stitch will be will lie a lot flatter and neater okay so once we've done that we then start to actually turn the hat round before we close the gap with a line of top stitch all the way round okay so find the space Get your hand in between the two fabrics and then just reach for the furthest corner and gently pull the hat through. All the way through. And then get your hand inside and push out the fabric with the interfacing in so the outer hat and then with your finger push the seams and I like to pin it as I do this because then you know you've got a really neat edge when you've got it right on the seam so I've turned that one with my hand and then I am actually going to put my hand back inside and just work my way around the edge pushing the seam right to the edge there do a little thumbnail press and pin it and you do this all the way around and then we're going to sew the top stitch close to the edge all the way around and when you get to this bit you obviously want to fold it in and get as much of a curve as you can Sorry, you missed the camera there. So when you get to the opening, you're going to fold both fabrics in and then just get as much as a curve on it as you can to match the rest of the hat. So it really helps if you've pinned both sides leading up to that curve. Okay. So... pinning and do it all the way around and then sew the opening closed and that will be it so there we have it your completed reversible sun hat so thank you for bearing with me during this recording I've got a bit of a rotten cold um, but hopefully it'll be clear by next month so if I can get out in some sunshine and get some free vitamin D I'm sure that would help so yes, your completed reversible hat. Well done, everybody. We're gonna keep it low-key, keep it softly spoken.